Good morning. Uh, my name is Tom Webb. I'm with St. Mary's University, uh, the Master of Management, Cooperatives and Credit Unions program. Uh, one of the things we try to do in our program is to ensure that our students have a lot of uh, thoughtful information to think about and reflect on. And that's what I'm going to try to do this morning. Uh, uh, and I'm going to talk a little bit about how we think about the economy. And you'll notice the title is a question mark. Is the economy an angry god? Uh, that we must continually make sacrifices to keep happy. Uh, so we'll deal with that a bit later, but first of all, uh, I want to uh, uh, talk a little bit about the cooperative difference. Uh, and uh, there are four pillars that make cooperatives different. One is, the, and this is the most fundamental one, is the purpose of the business. This is what really changes everything. The purpose of the business is not to maximize the return, to some shareholders off somewhere else. The purpose of the business is to provide members and communities with what they need in services and goods. That's the purpose of a cooperative. So uh, the, the, around that you have the other three pillars. Uh, one is justice, and I say justice, uh, people might use the word fairness. Uh, Co-ops get started because people feel that what's happening in their world isn't fair and it isn't just. And, and so they start a co-op to correct it. That's, that's where our co-ops come from. Uh, and, and our job is to keep them that way, is to keep them focused on fairness and justice. The, the other differentiating parts are that co-ops, unlike other social enterprise, come with a set of values and principles. And whether we, even if a board or manager doesn't buy into those values and principles, there is an expectation both by the people who work in the co-op, by the people the co-op serves, uh, by the community, that the cooperative will indeed live up to those, those things. So that's the roots. And what does it mean when you compare it to an investor-owned company? So in an investor-owned company, the values are up to the board, uh, whereas they come with the territory in the co-op. Uh, the legal purpose, as I said, is different. Once created, the legal responsibility of the board and management of an investor-owned company is to maximize return. That's what they're legally responsible to do. Co-op manager is responsible for meeting member and community need. Uh, the ethical stance is also different. Uh, Co-ops have an ethical stance that rests on justice. Uh, the ethical stance of investor-owned companies is based on charity. If they feel they have some surplus they can give away, then, uh, then that's a nice thing for them to do, and uh, often they do that. Uh, and the final uh, point of, of significant departure is that there really is only one bottom line in an investor-owned company. There are some sub-bottom lines, but those are only in place or in action if the bottom line is already met. So, or if, if the social bottom line or the environmental bottom line uh, helps improve the, the bottom line uh, or the return on investment. Co-ops have a much more difficult task. Co-op boards and managers have to balance multiple bottom lines, and that's an enormous challenge. And I just want to touch on this for a minute. You know, does that mean that everybody in co-ops are good and everybody in business is bad? But we know that's not true. Each of us knows ourselves uh, well enough, I hope, to know that you couldn't go much more than a week back without thinking of something you wished you'd done differently you'd wish you'd done better. People in co-ops don't get a halo by sitting in a co-op or working in a co-op. Uh, it just doesn't come with the territory. We're just people with all of our failings and strengths. The same is true of people in business. My father was a businessman, and he was a darn fine human being. Uh, and uh, so uh, they're just people in business, that's all. It's just that the structure they operate in is a very different structure. It pushes them to do different things. So the structure is the, is the big difference. And I, when you look at, at cooperatives, you often find what I call drift or, or identity uh, problems or even an identity crisis. Because as they sit out in society, they start off with a very clear idea of who they are. And there are a whole series of forces that nudge them ever so gently toward uh, leaving their identity behind. Uh, and becoming a, having a faltering identity, or perhaps even losing it. 
Uh, and, you know, these are things like the absence of education. You don't educate your managers, you don't educate your board, you don't educate your members, uh, then don't expect them to know. Uh, from the education programs in our society, co-ops are not talked about. They're not in the schools, uh, they're not in the universities, they're not in the business schools, with the exception of St. Mary's. Uh, competitive pressures. Uh, the standard accounting system that we use is one that is a series of measures to help managers uh, account for how they use their resources to achieve their goals. And the goal that's assumed in those accounting standards is maximizing the return on invested capital. So there's a whole series of things uh, that push co cooperatives or nudge them ever so gently, seduce them even, into abandoning their cooperative values. And the challenge then for cooperative managers is to create a cooperative difference. And, and to do that, you have to put the, the values, the principles, the purpose, and the idea of justice at the heart of everything you do. You have to keep going back to it. And you know, we tell the students in our program, put the co-op values, principles, and business purpose up on the walls of all your meeting rooms uh, so that you're faced with them every day. And you have to look at them every day. In fact, not a bad idea if you're having a meeting about something to start the meeting by looking at the co-op values and principles for two or three, five minutes, and then at the end of the meeting when you've decided something, to go back and check and see if the decision fits or if it's an uncomfortable fit. So that's, uh, that's all I'm going to say.